Hello. I'm Kurt Messick. I thank you for being part of the class, and I'm sorry I haven't been able to post up more videos more recently. As some of you know, I have been dealing with toothy issues for a while. Uh, they've been pulling wisdom teeth and, and giving root canals and other kinds of things. I had my last root canal uh, just, just the other day, just on Tuesday, so now I'm recovered enough to try to stumble through a few things for the class. I thank you for your work in the Judaism section. Uh, we actually offer an entire class on modern and contemporary Judaism here at APIS. Uh, so if you're so inclined and interested, please sign up for that. Uh, we also offer Christianity, several Christianity classes in the Religious Studies Department, as well as some courses on Islam in different departments, Religious Studies, as well as uh, International Relations and other places, uh, because that's a, a big issue. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is uh, Christianity. Uh, the Bailey book talks about Christianity in the Middle East in a lot of different perspectives, uh, not so much in terms of the historical perspective, but in terms of the different places. And I hope you'll see that Christianity as it is practiced throughout the Middle East can be a very different thing from Christianity as it's practiced here in the United States or in the West. It has become very much a Western religion, which means it, it's divorced itself somewhat from its roots. Because of course, it comes out just as Judaism comes out of, of Palestine, out of Judea, Jerusalem, Bethlehem, those environs. There is the ancient story that Jesus never traveled uh, beyond 30 miles from where he was born. Uh, for the most part, although there is the story he went to Egypt as, as a youngster. There are various stories that he went to India or that he went to England. I've even been at a tree in Britain that is supposed to have been planted by Jesus himself. Uh, I'm sure that's just a tourist trap because the tree itself was no older than 200 years, uh, but, but that, that didn't dissuade them from putting that up there. There are a lot of different things that come to mind when we're thinking about Middle Eastern Christianity, one of them is that it doesn't tend to be, by and large, Catholic or Protestant. If it's anything, it's Orthodox, or it might be even outside of the Orthodox, because as the Byzantine Empire fell and as the Roman Empire fell, a lot of Christian communities fell out of communication, fell out of authority structures from either the patriarchs in the East or the West. So there were a lot of varieties of Christians who got more freedom, ironically, under the Muslim control than they had under Christian control because different groups such as Nestorians or other groups that came out of, uh, out of Gnostics or Aryan Christians or other kinds of, of Christian groups really had to lie low while there was a Christian-dominated authority who could then resurface and flourish more once the Muslim control came into power. That was sometimes a double-edged sword, though, because at different times, the Muslim authorities would suppress other religions, whereas at other times, they were tolerated or even celebrated in different situations. Uh, if we go far afield of the Middle East, we can look at Andalusian Spain and see a, an, an interesting flowering of Jewish, Christian, and Muslim society there uh, that sometimes was paralleled also in the Middle East in the older times uh, is not so much the, the rule, though, as it is the exception. Uh, one of the things to pay attention to in the development of Christianity in the Middle East is the idea that because there was no central authority, you sometimes get different practices. You sometimes get even different scriptures different structures. And we have that, we have a different set of scriptures sometimes between a Protestant Bible and a Catholic Bible that there will be the Apocrypha in there. Well, the Apocrypha is actually different from Western Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. And then it can be different yet again with different passages, different pieces, different books between different groups within the Middle East. So those are all things that are worthwhile to see. But a lot of communities in the Middle East, in the Christian sense, had different relationships politically with whatever country they're in. Certainly the political situation in Lebanon was vastly different from the political situation in Iraq before uh, the, the current Gulf War. 
the situation in Iran, the situation in Saudi Arabia, these are all very different with regard to how they view Christians, whether they be indigenous populations or outsiders. And they'll often treat outsiders differently than they will the people who, who are inside, because usually outsiders are not there for proselytizing purposes. That becomes a big no-no, as, as some of you who have traveled in, in certain parts of the Middle East may, may understand. I want to commend to you a book that I, I recently found, and I'll hold this up here uh, briefly. It's called The Middle East, The Cradle of Civilization Revealed. And I found it to be a very interesting book, a very good book. Uh, it's one of these sort of coffee table books with sort of wonderful photographs and pictures and other kinds of, 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 of things that, that make it stunning to look at. It goes all the way back to archaeological times, uh, looks at archaeological finds. It is very much up to date. Um, I, I found it interesting here on page 21, we have uh, the archaeological treasures of Samara, and we have uh, a soldier in uniform here. So, so this, is, this is very much up to date. In, in terms of looking at the issues that are going on, uh, even in terms of the, the preservation of things that are in the Middle East and how we can make sure that we don't lose our history along with losing our present or our future and how can we make sure that all of these things come together. But this takes a, a broad range historical view of the Middle East in very accessible language. Uh, you can get it from Amazon.com or the history book club or even the History Channel, I believe, website will sell it. And it, despite its sort of magnificent size and, and photographs, is actually fairly inexpensive. It, it's, it's not a $120 book or anything like that. I think I got it for 40 So So it, it's a pretty nice thing to have, especially if you're interested in the Middle East, uh, because it can help bring things to life that, that simple text on the page will never do. Uh, I hope to have some more videos up for you on a little bit more regular basis for our second half of the class now that my teeth are all back together and hopefully they will all stay in my head and we'll go from there. But I look forward to seeing what you have to say about Christianity in the Middle East and Christianity under Islam and I look forward to any questions you may have to ask of me.